Welcome to ASEAN News, and here is the latest ones. China is ready to continue supporting Fiji in COVID-19 fight and other forms of cooperation. Chinese President Xi Jinping says China is ready to provide more vaccines and other support to Fiji to fight against COVID-19 epidemic. President Xi makes this statement in a phone conversation with Fijian Prime Minister Voreke Bainimarama. The chief state adds China will set up a China-Pacific island country's reserve of emergency supplies to help Fiji and other island countries in improving their ability to cope with major public health incidents and natural disasters. She says China respects Fiji's independent exploration of a development path that fits its national conditions and is ready to work together with Fiji to elevate the China and Fiji comprehensive strategic partnership to a new level as to deliver more benefits to the two peoples and jointly safeguard the common interests of developing countries. Meanwhile, Baini Marama thanks China for providing valuable support to Fiji in its fight against COVID-19. Fiji Prime Minister Baini Marama congratulates the Communist Party of China on its 100th founding anniversary. He says China has made great achievements in development and is playing an important leading role in the world under the strong leadership of far-sighted President Xi. Fiji is ready to strengthen exchanges with China, deepen mutually beneficial cooperation and enhance communication and coordination in international affairs. British Foreign Minister visits Cambodia after 30 years to build relations between the two countries. British Foreign Minister Dominic Raab arrives in Phnom Penh as first British Foreign Minister to visit Cambodia in 30 years. The aim of visits is to rebuild trade ties between the two countries. His visit also as part of a three-nation tour in Southeast Asia since the United Kingdom's exit from the European Union. In the meeting, they discuss how to strengthen, enhance diplomacy and trade relations with the region. Rapp also meets with Environment Minister Sai Sam Al and Ministry Spokesperson Ned Piaktra says in a tweet that the two talk about joint territories, priorities including human rights, trade, COVID-19 and situation in Myanmar. Rapp started his three-country trip in Vietnam and is to head to Singapore after his visit to Cambodia. In addition, a spokesperson for the British Foreign Office says the United Kingdom is committed to promoting freedom of expression and the charges brought against these three climate activists are concerning. Meanwhile, Cambodia says the deforestation and illegal logging had been brought to an end. Cambodia has been severely criticized by the United Nations for corruption, its treatment of trade unionists and repressive media laws. Rizik Shihab supporter fights with police about his prison sentence over spreading false information on COVID-19. Supporters of Indonesia's hardline Islamic cleric Rizik Shihab clashed with police near a district court where he was sentenced to four years in prison for creating public unrest by spreading false information about his health status. Police fired tear gas to disperse hundreds of Rizik supporters who fight back with rocks and plastic bottles prior to the announcement of the verdict in the court of East Jakarta. Meanwhile, prosecutors had called for a six-year sentence over a video posted on the YouTube channel of the hospital where the cleric was being treated for the coronavirus. Rizik claimed he was healthy despite tested positive for COVID-19. In a streamed broadcast of the trial, Judge Katwando tells the court that Rizik was guilty of announcing false information and purpose, fully causing trouble among the people. Rizik addressed the court and says that he rejected the ruling and will contest it. The verdict comes after Rizik, the spiritual leader of the outlawed Islamic Defenders Front, was given an eight-month jail sentence last month for breaching Indonesia's coronavirus scarps over several mass events, including his daughter's wedding, which was attended by thousands. Former Philippines President dies aged 61 years due to kidney failure.
Former Philippines President Benigno Aquino, known popularly as Noy Noy, the son of the two Southeast Asian countries' democracy icons, deaths in a Manila hospital of renal failure as a result of diabetes. He died at 61 years old. He was the President of the Philippines from 2010 to 2016 before he died. He was hospitalized earlier because of the renal failure. He wrote a wave of public support to the presidency after the 2009 death of his mother, the revered people power leader Corazon Aquino, who was herself president from 1986 until 1992. The broadcasting arm of the RTVBM government broadcast live the Philippines flag at half-mast at the presidential palace, while presidential spokesman Harry Roque issues a statement offering condolences to his family and asking Filipinos to pray to the former president. His namesake father, a senator who staunchly opposed the rule of strongman Ferdinand Marcos, was assassinated when he returned home from political exile in 1983. Young protesters take to the streets to show solidarity to Mandalay people. According to social media posts, a flash mob of protesters took to Yangon Street in Myanmar in support for a newly formed militia group in the second biggest city of Mandalay. Myanmar security forces, backed by armored vehicle, clashed in Mandalay with the People's Defense Force Group, which supports ousted leader Aung San Suu Kyi. Video obtained by Reuters shows the Yangon mob taking to the streets, raising their hands in a three-finger salute and chanting while holding a banner as a colorful flare is set off. Since the army seized power on February 1st and removed the elected government of Suu Kyi, the security forces have put down protests opposing military rule. In response, groups of opponents of the group, known as People's Defense Forces, have sprung up across Myanmar. Up to now, fighting involving lightly armed militias has been mainly confined to small towns and rural areas. But the group claiming to be Mandalay's new People's Defense Force says its members responded after the army has responded with artillery and airstrikes in other places after militia groups launched attacks on soldiers with casualties on both sides and tens of thousands of people displaced from their homes. The Kitit News Service reports the army supported by three armored vehicles had surrounded a boarding school in Mandalay where the militia had a base. A spokesman for the junta did not answer calls seeking comment. The United Nations General Assembly calls for all nations for a stop to the flow of arms to Myanmar and urges the military to respect the results of a November election and release political detainees including Suu Kyi. Myanmar's foreign ministry released a statement rejecting the United Nations resolution which is said was based on one-sided sweeping allegations and false assumptions. According to the Assistance Association for Political Prisoners Activist Group that security forces have killed at least 873 protesters since the coup. Myanmar's junta leader meets Russia defense in Moscow to strengthen military ties. Myanmar's junta leader, Commander-in-Chief Senior General Ming Holeng, meet with the Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu in Moscow. Russia's RIA news agency reports that Sergei Shoigu tells junta leader that Moscow is committed to strengthening military ties with Myanmar. Meanwhile, right activists have accused Moscow of legitimizing the junta, which seized power in February 1st coup, by continuing bilateral visits and armed deals. RIA quotes Shoigu as saying at the meeting that they are determined to continue their efforts to strengthen bilateral ties based on the mutual understanding, respect and trust that have been established between their countries. Ming Ohunleng attends the International Security Conference that opened in Moscow. Since the army seized power and removed Aung San Suu Kyi's elected government, troops have put down pro-democracy demonstrations and strikes and killed or arrested hundreds of protesters. Prime Minister of Japan urges the government to accelerate vaccination to support the domestic economy. Japanese Prime Minister Yoshihide Suga says the government will focus on speeding up coronavirus vaccinations in an effort to revitalize the economy. We are taking a two-pronged approach consisting of steps to prevent the spread of the virus and speeding up vaccinations. Overcoming the pandemic will be most important in supporting the economy and protecting people's livelihoods. As 
At the same meeting, Bank of Japan's governor, Haruhiko Kurora, stresses the benefits of supporting private efforts to combat climate change and offers a cautiously optimistic view on the outlook for the world's third largest economy. We believe that assisting private sector measures to respond to climate change from a central bank's perspective will help stabilize the economy in the long run. Japan's economy shrank and annualized 3.9% in the first quarter, and many analysts expect any rebound to be modest in April to June as state of emergency curbs to combat the pandemic cool consumption. China is very concerned over the violation of the rights of refugees and migrants by other countries. China voiced its grave concerns on the violations of the human rights of the rights of migrants and refugees by among others as the United States, the European Union, Britain, Australia and Canada at the ongoing 47th session of the United Nations Human Rights Council. In a statement delivered at the session Jiang Duan, Minister of the Chinese Mission to the United Nations in Geneva says, some countries have held migrants in immigration detention centers with poor conditions for a prolonged period of time. China is seriously concerned about the, the Chinese diplomat urges the countries concerned to stop immediately human rights violations at immigration detention centers, close all offshore detention centers, halt at once the family separation practice, respect and protect the human rights of migrants, especially migrant children. Jiang also says these detention centers are the hardest hit areas during the COVID-19 pandemic. He also says that China is concerned in particular the United States continue to separate families by forcibly pulling migrant children away from their parents. Many children ended up losing touch with their parents and families, which led to grave human tragedies. He further calls on the Human Rights Council and other UN institutions to continuously attend to human rights violations at immigration detention centers in the country's concern. Japan will give 6 million doses of vaccine to several countries of Southeast Asian nation. Japan will send 2 million additional doses of AstraZeneca PLC's COVID-19 vaccine to Taiwan and Vietnam, and arrangements are being made to send 1 million doses each to Thailand, Malaysia, Indonesia and the Philippines. The direct donations which should help Japan to increase its diplomatic influence in the Asia as wealthy nations are being pushed to provide more doses to the global vaccine sharing scheme COVAX to cover a 200 million dose shortfall. Foreign Minister Toshimitsu Motegi says Japan will start will provide 11 million doses to regions Southeast Asia including the Pacific Islands through the COVAX joint venture program from mid-July. Japan has pledged $1 billion and $30 million doses for the COVAX facility, and this month, its direct shipments to Asian neighbors are being made outside of COVAX to speed up delivery. This month, Japan donated 1.24 million doses to Taiwan, followed by the United States, giving 2.5 million to the island, which China claims as its own territory. Lithuania is also donating 20,000 doses to Taiwan, Taiwan has accused China of blocking its access to foreign vaccines, which Beijing denies. South Korean holds ceremony to mark 71st anniversary of Korean War. South Korea marks the 71st anniversary of the 1950-1953 Korean War with an official ceremony in the coastal city of Busan. Busan, South Korea's second largest city after Seoul, was the country's temporary capital during the war. During the ceremony, which is attended by military officers and Korean War veterans, South Korean Prime Minister Kim Bo Kyum delivered a keynote speech vowing that there must be no war on this land again. According to South Korea's Ministry of Patriots and Veterans Affairs, one veteran and three families of deceased veterans were awarded 
the Order of Military Merit for their efforts during the war. The Korean War started on June 25, in 1950, when communist North Korean troops launched a surprise attack on South Korea. North and South Korea are still technically at war since the 1950-1953 Korean War ended in the truce without a peace treaty. Well, that's the final news for today, and we're glad to have brought to you in today's program. We'll see you again.